Hey everybody, Steve from the Zappable team and in this tutorial video we're going to be looking at populating an application from scratch. So I have a base template application here and I've got some information that I want to populate this app with. So in this case we've used the cafe template to bring through some of the placeholder features that we can go in and customize. So if I go into the features section here we can see that we've got the get in touch, we've got the locations, membership card, a food gallery, the my account option, we've got custom page, and we've also got the follow us option here as well. So you can see all these in here. Now I have just made some light customizations on here and populated some text just to give the app a look and feel, but we will be going through each of these to get an idea of how to customize them and change them for the app that you're gonna build, uh, the business that you're gonna build an app for. So I'm using a cafe um, come restaurant that is fairly local to me it's about an hour's drive from my home and they don't know that I'm building this application but this could be an example if I was to go and take this application to them and say look here's an application I built for you how do you feel about it do you want to test drive it and see how it works with you as members of staff and your team and then you can make a decision about whether or not this is something you want to roll out to your customers going forward so I'm going to go back to the actual homepage for this application so, so we can see. So here I have the three cliffs, okay? So I'm gonna go in and manage that one. And from here you can see that the cafe template would already have been applied so we would have had that background with that image across the top, we would have had those colors. So you can see I have made some light customizations here on the preview device on the right. So the first thing I would do is I would look for an image which represents the cafe or represents that business. Maybe it's something of significance in the area. Maybe it's an internal uh, image of the actual cafe or restaurant, or like I found with some local businesses uh, near to me, uh, in one in particular, they have a very, very old grand piano in the actual restaurant itself. And that is kind of the centerpiece of that particular business. And anybody who's ever been there knows that knows the piano, knows the restaurant. And if you show them a picture of that piano, then that would trigger a thought of, oh, it's that particular restaurant because I know that piano. So there's gotta be something of significance to that business. And it's the little touches like this that can help you cross the line when it comes to making a sale because they can see that you've considered something, in my example, like the piano, that is something that's gonna resonate with them as a business and with their customers. So as I said, now in this one, I've used a picture of a lighthouse because there was a lighthouse near to the actual location. I haven't actually managed to grab the actual image of the one in that locality, but I'm not presenting this to the business at this stage. This is just a demo app for the purposes of training inside the members area here. So like I say, a lighthouse is quite significant for the area. And so that is what I've used the picture for. Now. I've got that picture off a place called Pixabay. So if I load this up, this is a great stock image site. So it's pixabay.com. And in here you can pop in something that is relevant. In this case, I use something like a lighthouse. And there is the image that I used on my one. So that's the picture of the lighthouse that you see within the application. Like I said, there's lots of images on here. These are all commercial and royalty free, so you can use them in your applications for business purposes without any attribution required. Uh, some of them will have attribution, but do check it, but the majority uh, definitely don't. So that's the image that I've got there. So let's go back to the application. So to change the homepage, all I did was go to change your homepage here. And then I've navigated to the folder that I've got set up with a number of the images that I wanted to use within my application. So you can see the lighthouse one is here. I've also got an image of the actual location itself, the business, and I've got an image which is a view from that uh, premises itself. So if you're actually sat upstairs in this cafe and restaurant, that is the view that you would actually get from the window. So I've chosen that image and all I would have done is click OK and that would have added that image there for my app. So the loca uh, localization settings, as this is a UK business, then I'm going to choose the GBP as the currency and the language is going to be English. So I just need to find English in the list. Okay, and so I've chosen British English 
and the font family. I'm quite happy with the one that the template comes with, but if I wanted to change that to something different, then I can just expand the box for choose your font family and then pick one which I can use within the app. So I think the default one I'm probably going to use is Nonito. And choose that font and then allow that to load. And yeah, you can see it might not have changed. I think that's the one that I used originally uh, in the template. So you can see that those fonts have changed. Let's just update and preview to make sure all the changes are pulled through. So that's the first kind of section here. Now, as this cafe restaurant is one that is close to the sea, I've customized the colors here on the menu to be kind of aquatic type colors. So I've gone for like a light teal and maybe an aqua blue. And then for the text itself, I've just kept the text as black. So to do that, we go to the colors tab. And there will be more elements that we may need to customize in this color section as the uh, the app build progresses. But the basic ones I want to look at, because we're using a template and we have some of this information populated already in terms of this menu that is accessible, I can customize those right out of the gate to give the app a good look and feel that uh, is going to be representative of that business. So on the home page, we can see we've got background and image. And what we want here is underneath some of these here so let's go there so the home page we've got like I say the background is what we see behind these menu items so as I said I've gone for this sort of light teal aquatic blue kind of color and I think the lighter color works on here uh, to kind of complement the background of the sort of sea style image so I'm choosing that color I've gone for a dark border to make sure that it's clear which one of these is going to be an item and then the image icon itself you can see these down the side I've chosen a sort of a darker color for that which matches the border and then if we go into a particular feature within this you can see with the header options here if I go into let's say get in touch you can see across the top here we have the get in touch text and this background color applies to that section as does the border and then we can see the text color here so I've customized that at the moment just because I like to uh, to have the color flow through as much as, it, as we can out of the gate. So we'll come back to the color panel when we need to shortly. Um, when we start customizing some of the features inside here we'll find that we might need to edit the card, we might need to edit the list, uh, maybe some of the buttons. The button was the only other one that I did change at the start here which is button positive which is the one that's used by the form. So if I go into the get in touch thing again you can see that we have this dark sort of blue color on the button with a black border and a white text on it as well. So button positive is the one that links up with the form here. So let's go back to the features and start looking at how we can populate those. So the first one we're going to have a look at is going to be getting touch. It's using the form feature, which can be found under contact. And I've gone in, I've renamed this as get in touch. To rename them, you just click the little pencil icon and then you can go and change that to whatever you want and whatever you put in this section here will be what displays on the actual menu within the app. Now I've created a basic form and if we open up the form feature here you can see. So what I have first of all here is an image, then we've got a name, email and number field and these are all set to text inputs. Okay and then the final one then is your message which I've used as the type text area. So when you're adding your form fields if you look under the type option here you can see you've got some formatting elements at the top and then you've got some input elements on the bottom section of it so you just pick the ones that work for you for your form and then you can just add them in by giving them a label so if we were to put in for instance a title section here and we would just type in here something like please complete the form below and then I'm going to hit save And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this actual section here up. Just by left clicking and dragging, I'm going to pop this under the image. So you can see now that we have a section here which says, please complete the form below. And we've got the option for the person to add their name, email and phone number in this section here. Okay, so it's really, really simple and really easy to use. We've got a great tutorial on the forms inside your members area. 
where it talks you through what each of these particular elements does and gives you a visual sort of appearance of what they uh, what they do. Uh, and like I say, you can just have a look at which one meets your needs best for the form type that you're creating. Now, in terms of the questions for this form, this might seem completely basic, um, but what I have done in the background is I have got the customer's website open. So if I go and have a look at this, and if I go to the contact page, then what we can see is their very own form here. Okay, so it's name, telephone number, email, and message. So that's all the questions that they ask on their website, and therefore that's all the questions I'm gonna ask on the form inside their application. Okay, so just keeping it nice and simple, using the materials we've already got access to on their website. And this is how I'd recommend that you do it as well. Go and have a look at their website and pull off as much data as you can that you think would be appropriate to have in an application that gives the customer a good user experience of that, informs them about the business, what they're about, what their mission statement is, what their message is, and obviously what products and services they offer, and then how they can get in touch or how they can access those products and services uh, as well using the feature base that you already have. Okay, so it's all about giving a good representation of that business inside an application, especially if you're presenting them to them as an option for sale for your business of the, uh, the application itself. So I'm gonna go back to features. Now that we've got that form one done, and here we have the hour location. So you can see that's the second option on the menu here. So let's go in and edit that feature. Now this is a custom page. And to add one of those, you just go to content, and then you've got the custom page option here. Okay, you just click that, and then you can go in and populate it. So let's go into this one and edit what we've already done. So in this one, all I've done is added a couple of sections into the app. So on the cover photo, which is the top one here, so to add that, I've just gone to cover and clicked it, and then it gives me the option to add an image just by clicking the add cover button. So I've got a cover image here. It's not the best quality, but it's one that is representative of that business. So if we were doing this as a professional level, we would make sure that the image is pixel perfect and not kind of blurry as this one appears to be, uh, because it's it's a poor quality image off the internet, but we would get a proper one found on Google or even potentially, if we're in the area ourselves, take a photo of this business ourselves and use a professional level quality, just like a higher resolution camera or maybe a good photo on, on a phone because cameras on phones these days tend to be just as good as the ones you can buy in, you know, as a physical camera unit itself. So, so we've got the image of the business. Then we've got this text here. So people come from miles around to enjoy our homemade cakes and great coffee. So you may ask, well, where did that come from? Does that have any significance? Is that something that I've just made up? Well, the truth is this actually is on their own website. Now, if I go back to their website here, and if I go back to their coffee shop, you can see this yellow box on the side. It says, all our, made, all our food is made with lots of TLC for you to enjoy. And just to the left here, we have people come from miles around to enjoy our homemade cakes and great coffee. So this is something that they've put on their own site. It has some significance. It's at the top of the page. Uh, you know, the font is, is larger than most areas of font on the page. As I say, it's in a banner almost in with a, a picture of a, a cake behind. So they want you to see this and they want you to uh, associate this with their business. So it's quite important to them. So I've used that text on the actual app itself because I think that seeing that on there will relate to them because they've put that on their own website as something of significance, okay? So for that, we've just used a simple text block, which is the first one. And then we put the text in, I've sent the text, and then I've made a change to the color of the text. I've gone to make it blue. I can change this to any color just by changing it in this panel here by highlighting the text first and then clicking this and choosing the color that I want. So as we're going for this aquatic theme, I'm gonna choose the blue one and just make sure that the text is bold so it stands out. So I'll just update that so you can see just by using this. I mean, this is pretty standard for, for a lot of things. So we've got that text element in here now. And then beneath it, we've got this, if I just drag the app down a little bit, we've got the hour location, we've got the phone number, and we've got the website address. So to do that, what we've added in is an address section. And from here, you can see that I've given it the label of our location. Now I could change this to something like the three cliffs. 
and that will change the text here from our location to the three cliffs so I'll do that here I've got their address which is available on their website their phone number which is available on their website and obviously I've got the website open so I know what the website URL is and then I've marked to display phone to display website and to display the address and there's also the location button here as well because what this will do is if the user has Google Maps on their phone it will open the mapping system and show them directions to the premises for what you know the address that you've actually supplied in here now the only other thing to note is that there is a latitude and longitude option on here now again I've just gone into Google I've put the postcode in and I've asked for the latitude and longitude so it's really simple to do like I say just go into Google and put the postcode and then latitude longitude and the result that pops up will give you the exact latitude and longitude that you need to populate these fields with and again this is helpful for when it comes to using the mapping feature that it gets the user to the right location for where the business is located in terms of where they're going to get directions to now the final section on this page here is the directions so here i have directions directions by road directions by train and directions by bus and this text box here has been populated entirely from the customer's own website so if i go back to their website go to contact and here in the middle we have their directions so again this is text provided by their own site it's not something that i've had to populate it's been very easy just to highlight this right click and copy and then go into the application and paste it into the text field really really easy to do and that information because they have a website is already populated and provided for me just to be able to use inside my app okay so i've just literally pasted that in there and then I've gone to update and preview after I've saved okay so that's pulled the changes through we just hit save one more time and there we can see now that it says the three cliffs on here the text has been bolded and then we've got our directions at the bottom so that's a simple location based page using the custom page builder so let's go back to the features and now we can have a look at the membership card so if I go into the membership card option here now I've added one in it called a free slice of cake which requires 20 stamps but if we're going to set start a new one let's go to add cards and we could call this free coffee and cake and let's say that we need a total for this one we're going to use eight points and one point is worth let's say two pound fifty so that means that they spend 20 pounds and then they get a free coffee and uh, cake slice let's just make sure that uh, that's available then we can choose whether or not this is used only once or if we leave it open people can accrue this multiple times and get the reward multiple times depending on how many times obviously they complete the stamps on this particular membership card so just just to cover these again briefly the number of points this is the number of points required in order to uh, obtain um, on this particular card and then we have what one point is actually worth in terms of value so if we hover over this little question mark here it's like a tool tip it says please insert estimate worth of one point this amount will be used in the reporting to estimate sales so for ten dollars fifty please type ten fifty okay so in this case one point for me is going to be worth two pound fifty which is going to make it a total of twenty pounds to spend in order to complete this particular card then we can apply our own terms and conditions so if there are specifics that you need to cover then you can put your own customized terms and conditions for this card in this section once you've got those you can hit save And now we have our new card with eight stamps which means that every time £2.50 is spent one of these stamps can be marked off as completed and obviously at the end then we can offer a reward for the completion of this particular card okay so if I go to design here at the bottom we can see that we do have some design options now by default it will sort of set to this circular one we can change it to a square image if we wanted to or we can change it to a sort of 
a rotating dial depending on the number of points. So this will fill up, obviously, depending on the number of points that they get. And once they get to full, again, it means that they've completed it. And again, this depends entirely on the type of application you want to you want to build in terms of its look and design. So here, I'm going to just choose the square cards option and hit update and preview. And then I'm going to go into the rewards section. So here's where you apply the number of sort of interim rewards on your card. So let's go to rewards here. We can add a reward. So here is where we can put in the reward name. So let's say we want to offer a free coffee at some point during the completion of their the stamping of their card. So here's the number of points to redeem the reward. So here I can add in, let's say they need 10 points to get the reward. We're going to leave this open for a year. So I'm going to put in 365 days. And then in the description, we're going to put get 10 points, get a free coffee on us. Now, here's where we can add some inactive rewards and active rewards. So all this is is an icon. So where this icon is placed, you will see it appear in the correct section on the card. And if it's been activated, then it will already be colored in using a different sort of uh, image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a stock image site and grab a couple of uh, stock images that we can use. I'll upload those and I'll show you how that looks. OK, so I'm on the stock site now, which is called freepick.com. And I'm picking a colored coffee image here. So I'm going to choose to download this. And I'm going to download this. We just double check the size. So it's 256 by 256 is what we need. So let's go back there. So download. I'm already on that page. Let's go to PNG. Let's download at 256. And free download. So you can see with this one that I need to accredit the author. So I uh, will do that on a page in one of the policy pages. We've got the coffee cup there. So that's the colored one. Now there was also one here that didn't have the color in it. So let's go and grab that one. So we'll go back to that link. And for this one as well, we want to download that to 256. And I'm going to download that one as well. So both of these images are now downloaded to my system. So I'm just going to open a folder and make sure that those images are inside my three cliffs folder. Now I do recommend just for organization that anything to do with a single app, you do try to keep everything in one folder. So if you ever need to go back to anything, then you can simply go to that folder and know that your downloaded images are going to show there. So if I bring this folder in, you can see I've got my coffee cups in this folder, which is called three cliffs. I've got all the other images to go along with it couple of images of cake and then we've got some images here that they supplied themselves on their website to do with the restaurant side of things so I'll bring that back out of the way now if I close these icon pages down go back into my application so an inactive reward is going to be the colorless image so let's go there let's go into my three cliffs folder grab my coffee cup and click OK and OK. And then the active reward, we're going to choose the one with coffee in it. And again, click on OK. And then I'm going to click on Save. So when the person gets to this level on the card, it's going to mean that they are able to qualify for a free coffee. OK. So when they get to that 10 points mark, which is this one, once they get the stamps in place, they're then able to claim that free coffee. Now, the next thing to look at with this particular card is going to be the validation of the card. So this is where you're going to be able to add employees into the actual uh, app itself so that a particular person or a particular number of members of staff can actually validate the membership cards. So to do that, if we go to the plus symbol here, we can see that we have a member of staff here called Sarah. And Sarah is already an employee. She has her own QR code here. We've also set a pin code for her. And if she's no longer a member of staff, we can click the X to remove Sarah from our employees who are able to stamp a membership card. So let's say we've now added John to our team. And then we're going to set a pin code for John. 
and we can click on OK. So now we have two members of staff who are able to process the stamps on membership cards through scanning using the QR code or to put their four digit pin code in when they're actually clicking on the stamp button here. So as we're not signed in at the moment, I can't show you this, but I can see when the person has the application open, they're able to scan the QR code and it will automatically add the points to the person who's signed into the application. So they will be able to have their points added because John or Sarah has scanned their QR code. Alternatively, a pin code can be put in if the, the stamp button is manually clicked. It will ask them to populate it with their four digit pin, which the user can just put in and then that will assign the points to that. Now you can use a single pin for a store, but what you do have here as well is when you have a membership card and you apply staff to it, you can actually see who is assigning the points to the users of the app. Now this will help protect your business from things like people uh, fraudulently giving away points to you know to family or to friends saying I'll add an extra couple of points on or something for you then this is the way to stop that now like I said there is an option for this membership card which is under the plugins option you'll see an option for loyalty analytics so if I do open that in a new tab what we can see here is the feature analytics so we can see the customer data and here we have the loyalty control. So this gives you who is adding the points and you can see how many points have been validated per employee. And then we can see how many validated points are for the actual, uh, you know, the, the cards with inside, which is the free coffee and the cake slice or the free slice of cake. So you can see that the cards are there and you can see how many points were validated and the number of rewards that have been used for each of those. So this is great insights for the business to see, you know, just how many free cake slices they've given away, how many free coffees they've given away as a result of having a loyalty card for their particular business. And also when you link it to the sales volume as well, knowing how many how many points are required in order to, uh, to have a stamp uh, stamped on your membership card obviously that will calculate the volume of earnings and revenue from the uh, people who are using the membership card as well that it's linked to so uh, great insights again and you can see how effective the card can be for that particular business just in this section here so if i close that down and go back to the application so that's pretty much it for the membership card the only other options you have then is to link it into mcommerce so if you had a store for instance and you wanted to allow points to be accrued for purchases you can link that to your mcommerce feature inside your application you can just add the commerce feature and then again like i say you can validate that with purchases made here okay but as this isn't in this particular application we're not going to cover this here but we'll uh, we'll just come back to that in another tutorial when we're actually covering a membership card for an online store in your app so let's go back to features. Now, what I could have done is had a look on their website, which I which I did, but I didn't explain that in this part of the video, is that I could go onto their website and see if they did actually have a loyalty card where you could sign up for, and then you could be emailed the, you know, your copy of the card and wait for one to come in the post. But they didn't actually have anything on their site to do with loyalty cards, so therefore I wasn't able to use their existing data, but maybe this may be a business uh, you know, model or addition to their business model, which they may not be aware of, or they may not have adopted, but now you have the ability to implement something which they could have thought about before, but didn't know how to do it, and now you've got a simple solution for that business as another way of increasing the value of the application to them as a business. So if I go back to the app features again, now, the next one I've got here is a food gallery, and for this, I've just used the image gallery under the media tab, so I've used this images one. Now, if you were populating a menu rather than just images, then you do have an option under monetization for set meal. Now, set meal is used to create menus, so you can actually set pricing in there as well. So if I do have a look at this set meal one with you, like I said, I don't have this added, it's just the image gallery. So what we've got here is then is the ability to add content to this. So click the add content button and here we could have, uh, oh, let's actually put that in. So let's put in carrot cake and the price is going to be 395. 
here we could give a description and then we can add a picture here as well so let's just grab that image and click OK so I can create like I say a menu doing this but I wanted to just show off the sort of quality of their food so you can see that they've got carrot cake and when they click into it it gives them a description a price and then there's a, there's a description at the bottom here about what that item is but for the purpose of what I was trying to do it was just to create some easy on the eye aesthetics using the food gallery one which just shows some images of food that has been prepared inside this particular cafe or restaurant and when the user on the app clicks the image they can see a nice picture of some food that they themselves could go out and get if they went to this cafe with a booking so to do that like I say in the images one let's go in and edit the food gallery and let's get rid of set meal so let's go back into food gallery as I said this is just an image feature that can be found inside of the media tab so we can change the name of this just like we can with any other by clicking the pencil so I've named this as food gallery now I have the ability to manage the content so I've got the eight images that I've added or I can add content by clicking the plus symbol we can either integrate with Flickr and pull images through from Flickr or if we have particular images for this business as in most cases you will you just click the my images button give the gallery a name so we're going to call this new gallery and then I'm going to click here to upload my images and then click browse now there are some limitations here as well the maximum image size is 2000 pixels high and wide and you're only allowed to upload jpg files and png files okay so most of your images will be those but that's just a limitation for this feature that you can only upload those two file types so we click on browse and here i have the food so i'm going to highlight them all and add all of these images to my app so i'm going to click on open and here you can see that it's added all of those images and now I can give the image a title and I can give the image a description here as well and I can populate that in all the boxes with you know, key information about this particular meal and let's just add that in okay so that's all those added and now we can click on save okay so we now have this new gallery so when the user clicks in to the food gallery they're shown the default one which is our food gallery but then we've got the ability to get them to see our food which is that obviously the new gallery is the one that we're seeing but our food is also still there and you can have as many of these galleries in here as you want and all the user has to do is click on the little dots in the corner to unlock a new gallery and when we do open the image as you can see it has that particular image on there for us so with all images we recommend like I say don't try and upload them which are more than 2000 by 2000 because they'll be rejected but keep them as a good resolution but try to optimize the images as much as possible using services like tinypng.com or tinyjpg.com to compress the images which means that they end up a smaller file size and therefore they will load faster on the application as a result so it gives your user a better user experience when things load quicker on their application and that's it really for the image feature so the other one then we've got is the my account now you'll need this in place if you're using something like the loyalty card because it needs an account to connect to so the user will have to sign into their application using a username and password now the my account one is just under memberships so you can add that very very easily and there's nothing to set up here really it just asks you you know do you want to allow users to self-register um, do you want to allow users to log in via Facebook that will need the API key configured for that uh, and then how do you want the design is it list or card so list is where it will block everything off individually and card will populate everything into one single block and then we've got a commercial agreement and then we've got a custom label here so this is where you can add in let's see if I go back to my account 
So I don't have anything set in here at the moment, but we've got the commercial agreement, which is the privacy policy. And then we've got this box here, which says, I'd like to hear about offers and services. Um, so would you like to join our newsletter? We'll click on save. And let's update and preview that. And let's go back into my account, go to sign up. So you can see here it says, would you like to join our newsletter? And they can check that when they're viewing it. And then you have their consent then in app to be able to add their details to your autoresponder. Okay, this is the manual way of doing it. You can direct them to a lead generation page using a link in a custom page or a link actually using the links feature. It's entirely up to you and you can automate that process entirely using a different method. But this is just one way that you can add them to this service as well. And I so say there's nothing much more to configure in this section. Let's go back to features. And then what I have here is a custom page. So let me just open up this custom page here. So in this one, I've got some images of cakes at the top, and then I've got details of their infamous cakes lower down on the page. So this is just creating something really simple. Again, this information has come from their own website. So if I go to their coffee shop, I think it was this page, or one of the pages on here anyways, had details of all of their cakes. I think it was in the taster. There we go. So our infamous cakes, and you can see all the details of the cakes that they create. We can use this text from here. So let's grab some of this from this section. So let's copy that text and let's go back into this custom page. Let's change the details here to uh, our delicious cakes. Let's hit save. So we can rename that. And I'm going to add a text section. We're just going to add it to, by default at the bottom, but I'm just going to paste in that information. And then I'm going to move this text section at the top because I want this to be dominant on the page. It's the first thing that they see. So now if I hit save, and let's update and preview. So we've got this new section here now called Our Delicious Cakes. We've got this text at the top, and you can see if I scroll down here, we've got some images of the cakes, and then we've got some more text section here at the bottom to do with the cakes that they actually have in their kitchen. So again, you can populate this pretty much with anything that you want. There's lots of information on this particular site that I could use. We've got opening times, if I wanted to include that, then we could you know, put a really simple Monday to Friday sort of opening time but a text on there really really easy to do again we could just do that using the custom page by adding something like text and here we could add in opening times and we just put Monday something like that let's just copy that We just obviously customize this then to make sure that it actually says the days. I don't know why I've done it that way around. And that's supposed to be Thursday, not Tuesday. And then if we wanted to add in there again, we could just add uh, Saturday and Sunday lower down if they're open on those days as well. So let's do that and then we'll choose Sunday here so on Saturdays they may open be open till 1230 and let's say Sundays they are rightfully closed okay and let's just make sure that the opening times is more prominent so let's change this from normal to let's say heading two. let's make it bold let's change the color of the text to blue and again, let's hit the save button. And this could go on its own page. It can go on any about page. It could go on anywhere that you feel is right to put this information, okay? So here we have at the bottom here, opening times, Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5.30, Saturday, 9 till 12.30, Sunday closed. Okay, so that's just a nice little thing that you can add 
to this particular section here. Okay, so really easy just using the custom page. There's so many more things you could do. Maybe you'd want to give a video um, of the team making a cake, maybe using a stock video, maybe you know, an actual video of the owners of this cafe saying, you know, hello, welcome to our new application. Thank you for downloading the app. Um, you know, pointing out some of the key areas of that app, like you know, make sure you sign up for a membership card or a loyalty card. Uh, you know, make sure to check out our cake section as this gets updated every week. Uh, you know, check our opening times over Christmas. You know, keep up to date with all the latest uh, news that they have. Now, there are so many more things that you could do with this. I don't know if this particular website that they're using runs on WordPress. It's possible. And if so, if they had a news section on this site, then you could integrate your application with the WordPress feature and just assign the news tab. And therefore you could just put a news section in here. Just by going to the integration option, you could choose WordPress, pop in their details. And then when you actually populate this feature, there is a tutorial for this in the members area. Then you could just choose the news category and that will be all that will show in here. So it doesn't pull through everything else. And as long as they use the default WordPress editor to create their posts, then that will work perfectly fine in this system. Now, the only thing that I've noticed here as well, which we've got tutorials for, but this Our Delicious Cakes one just has the standard image here, which is the custom page one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to flat icon, which is one that I use for images. And I'm going to just go for cake. And let's grab an image of a slice of cake. So let's grab that one. And then let's download this one as 256 and free download. Now again, this one requires attribution, so I would have to click it uh, if I want, I have to add that text to my site in order to confirm. So palm trees, everybody loves these things, I'm sure. There we go. So I've got that piece of cake. So let's go back into my app our delicious cakes. Now I'm going to put that piece of cake image into my file. Let's just drag that over. Now to change the icon, I'm going to click on the icon itself in the top left hand corner. Click on the pencil. Now I can change this for any one of the ones that's built into our system, or I can add my own. Just make sure that the icons are square, so equal proportion of height and width. I'm going to go to add new icon. And then I'm going to click on this piece of cake icon here and click on open. It's the right size, so I'm going to just click OK. And then I'm going to choose this icon here. So it's now added that to my custom page. So I can click on save. And I can see that that one is actually black. If I would have had used an icon which was white, let me just see if I can do that. It will automatically color it for me. Um, so I need to be signed in here, so bear with me a second. Okay, so now that I'm signed into the site, let's go back to that piece of cake again. I think, I'm not sure if it was that one or not. Let's just grab that one anyways. So when I'm signed into the site called Flat Icon, I can go in and click Edit. And then I can choose a color for this piece of cake. So I can pop it into that corner so that it's white. And I can download as PNG and as 256 is the one I'm going to use. So let's bring that one over into my folder as well, which is now white. Let's go back into the features. Let's change that one, add new icon. Let's go back to the other oh, actually different. I click on open. And it's hard to see because obviously it's white against white. Let's click on OK. And now let's click on that piece of cake. And now if I click save, it changed to white. So when we do color the icons in the options panel, it will allow us to uh, to customize that so that we can recolor all the icons that are white to give us the color that we actually want, okay? So don't panic for that for the time being. Let's go back to features. And the final one here I have is the follow us. So this is using the links feature, which can be found under integration. And what I've got here is some links here to their Facebook, to Twitter, and I made up an Instagram for them because they don't have one. 
But to do that, all we would do is add a picture here. If you don't add a picture, you can see how Facebook and Twitter look on the right side, then it doesn't have an image here on that left side there. But as we've added one for the Instagram feature, you can see how that would work. Now, let's say that we wanted to add something like Pinterest or another social media network. Let's click on picture. We can load something up from our system. So I'm going to grab a piece of cake and click OK. And let's say the label for this one for us to reference and for the user to see on the screen is going to be Pinterest. And I don't even know if that's how you spell it, but we'll work with it. So Pinterest.com slash we put in here, making this up again, Three Cliffs Cafe. Then we can decide whether or not this opens in the app browser, in the default phone browser, or an external app. So it's usually only one of the first two that you're going to choose, whether or not you want to open it in the application itself, or if you want to default to what the user is used to using on their phone, which could be Chrome, it could be Safari, it could be any number of browsers that they use. So I'm just going to choose the default uh, in-app browser. And then I'm going to click on save to add this feature or add this new link to our feature. So if we scroll down to the bottom, we can see now that we have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. And here we can see that our Pinterest logo has been added or a piece of cake in this instance. But you can download social media icons from a number of locations online using things like FreePick or a number of other stock image sites that can support icons. Just download the ones that you need and you can add them to the site, no problem. And once you're done, hit Update and Preview. And then you have a base app, essentially, that you can be happy with to take to a potential business and say, you know, have a look around and see what you like about the app. Is there things that you'd like to change? You know, are you interested in having an app for your business? And, you know, you can follow the training that we do week by week to, to have more in-depth sales materials and references that you can make about obviously how app development is in a massive stage of growth and how if they don't jump onto the bandwagon now with it then they are going to be ones that are going to be left behind you can encourage the app to be a the purpose of repeat business so bringing your customers back because not only do you actually have the application itself don't forget you've got one of the most powerful tools in your arsenal here using the push notification system which will deliver a message directly into the pocket or into the handbag or into the coat pocket wherever the phone is kept it's usually very very close to the person and when someone's phone goes off unless they're really fed up of their phone going off all day then they're going to pick it up and see what that message or notification is and if they see that it's about this particular cafe that they were thinking about going somewhere on the weekend and now they, they can see that they've got this uh, new type of cake that they've made and for this weekend only they're doing a promotion of uh, you know buy four coffees and get two cake slices free or buy a piece of cake and get a coffee free there's all sorts of ways in which you can encourage people to come in to the business premises and of course while people are there generally they will spend more than just the offer that you presented them with so it's a great opportunity for you know free marketing essentially for a business to be able to use the push notification system which is a huge huge plus for like I say for getting in front of the audience which they already have but sometimes we can forget that businesses are there until we visit an area and go oh we haven't been there for a while let's pop in for a coffee but if you'd have had a prompt maybe once or twice a week about going in to get a free coffee and a free slice of cake with every order of a meal over five pounds or ten pounds then it's going to encourage you to go back to that business more and more because they're going to be in your thoughts more and more. And if it's a nice place like this one is in particular, it's got fantastic views, it's got lovely walks, um, great for families and children and, and dog walkers alike, this is an ideal sort of proposition to get that message out there in front of them, to encourage them to come down to that area, have a coffee while they're out there with their family and walking their dog. Okay, so I hope this gives you an idea of how you can do this. Now, to share this application with your users then you know or with the potential businesses you know initially you can just share from the publication screen you've got a web link so if i go to the three cliffs here and expand and go to advanced settings you've got a web app link here that you can send to the user okay or what you can do is create uh, something like a a bitly link or a url shortener from google and just 
create your own short link and then put that as the follow-up address so when people use the short link then it directs them to this where they can actually view the app on their device okay so lots of easy ways to get that in front of your audience so i hope you found this video helpful we'll be doing more videos around this theme on different styles of application going forward but here's one for a very simple coffee shop come restaurant and lots of basic features that you can include to really really drive up the chances of getting the app sale and even if it's not the full value sale that you want it's still about in the early days it's about getting customers in through the door for your app business to use them as very very powerful testimonials going forward to accrue more new sales and more new business as a result of having already got satisfied customers using your app building service okay so thanks for watching and i'll see you in another tutorial soon bye for now